my name is Ariel like the mermaid. Now recently I've been hearing more and more about these queer people who force straight people to walk on eggshells and I just want to say as a, as a queer person myself that I think it's it's completely inappropriate for for queer people to be getting in front of straight people and just deliberately placing eggshells for them to walk upon. I mean it's completely inappropriate. Like, I, it's a huge inconvenience to these straight people to have to be stepping on eggshells constantly. I mean, you know, that's gonna ruin their shoes, I mean, if they care about that. And, I mean, it, it's a huge inconvenience that they're trying to get somewhere and they're, you know, have to constantly be crunching a bunch of eggshells underneath their feet. I mean, you know, who knows? Maybe they need to go somewhere important, and by putting eggshells under them, you're you're keeping them from getting to that appointment that they need to go. Maybe they need to, I don't know, go and procreate somewhere. I mean, I don't know, whatever straight people do, but, you know, I, I think as the queer community, we really need to stop putting eggshells underneath straight people's feet and causing them to, to, to constantly walk on these eggshells. It's just completely inappropriate. Obviously, I'm joking, but I'm referring to, uh, I think a while ago, there was some article posted uh, by someone talking about queer people making straight people walk on eggshells. Um, and I don't necessarily want to, to, to necessarily uh, specifically uh, respond to that article, um, although there's been many good responses to that article that you might want to check out, and I might put some links in the uh, description uh, about concerning that article and some of the responses to that article. But I want to talk about uh, this idea of um, queer people making straight people walk on eggshells, uh, you know, whether uh, where queer people are making straight people have to be too careful about what they say, and etc. First of all, what I will say, though, is I think in order to survive, survive as a queer person, uh, sometimes, yes, you do have to be patient with straight people, um, because sometimes uh, it's hard, because I think when we're from a young age in our culture, sometimes you have to be patient with other queer people, too, because queer people don't always know what's, uh, you know, the most uh, appropriate thing to say to other queer people. Um, but um, we were raised in a uh, society that is very, um, teaches us uh, very heteronormative ideals and heteronormative ways to speak. Um, and I think it, it's, it's very easy for people, without meaning to, to say something that um, is hurtful to queer people because they just don't understand. And I think there is a degree of, of, of patience that's needed to be able to deal with this and deal with our differences. However, um, I, I think that it's, it's, it's very... My main problem with people complaining about queer people making other people walk on eggshells um, it's just that it, 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 it trivializes the problems that queer people face by saying that, by always framing them in how they inconvenience straight people, when really the point should be about how um, our, like, the, the, the language that we use and how um, our, our just, the, the social expectations in our culture are constantly inconveniencing queer people. Furthermore, I think a lot of the places where we're talking about this, um, where, where people are complaining about this happening, about um, queer people making straight people walk on eggshells, are LGBTQ plus support groups in, in, in these kind of support areas. And here's the thing. <laughs> if you are a straight ally of queer people. First of all, that's that's great. Um, but here's the thing. If you're a straight ally and you go into an LGBTQ plus space, uh, a safe space for LGBTQ plus people, you have to be willing to figure out, yes, sometimes you might not mean to and you might offend people, um, and it's not your fault necessarily, but the fact is, if you're going into a space that's for LGBTQ plus people, you have to be willing to deal with that and deal with and, and apologize and own up to it and, 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 and learn and try to learn quickly. It's, it's not, um, 
if it's a space that's meant to support LGBTQ plus people, the main priority of that place shouldn't be to teach straight people. <laughs> that's not, um, you know, yes, I think that's part of what we have to do as queer people is we do have to um, teach straight people how to be supportive, but that shouldn't be, you know, the main purpose of an LGBTQ plus support group shouldn't be um, constantly babying the straight people and telling straight people um, how to be most respectful. Uh, the, the main purpose of these spaces should be protecting LGBTQ plus people and it should be providing a place where LGBTQ plus people can be, feel safe being themselves. So yeah, if you're, if you're a, a, a straight person um, and, and you go to one of these places, um, you know, yeah, you might accidentally mess up a person's pronouns. You might accidentally, you know, joke about something uh, that makes people uncomfortable because, you know, you didn't realize that. Um, there's a, a lot of things like that can happen. And I think it's important to recognize um, that it, it, it's, 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 it's okay, but um, you have to understand that people aren't just getting upset over nothing. And, and, and the main purpose of these groups is not to cater to you and not to teach you. And it, 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 the, the main reason why these places exist, it's to support queer people. And by the way, I mean, it's not just, um, it, it, it's not just straight people that sometimes talk about this sentiment. It's a lot of times it's queer people, especially towards trans people. A lot of um, uh, LGB people um, feel like, you know, trans people uh, are constantly making them walk on eggshells and constantly making them have to be worried about um, misgendering a person and etc. Saying other things that might be offensive uh, or might be cis-sexist. Um, but again, I think um, if you're claiming, especially if you're claiming to um, be a space that, um, I mean, if you're, if you're a space that's not willing to um, really be safe for trans people, then you're not an LGBT plus support group. You're an LGB support group. And that's how it is. I mean, and if you if you if you want to um, provide places that are safe, and you want to be, and also if you're if you're claiming to be an LGBT plus ally, if you're if you're claiming to be an ally, um, you have to be willing to. This is part of being an ally. Here's what it comes down to. You can't be simply be. First of all, um, if you want to just be, if, if you're just a, an ally of gay people, then. You can't simply be an ally of gay people by just saying, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm cool with gay marriage, whatever, it doesn't affect me, I don't care. You know, saying something like that, I mean, while there's nothing really wrong with saying something like that, it's, um, it, that doesn't make you, saying things like that and just saying that you support gay marriage or saying that you support gay people, that's not, that, that, that doesn't, that's really just like the bare minimum of being an ally. Um, you, you can't really just pat yourself on the back for um, just saying that you support gay people. That doesn't really make you an effective ally. You actually have to actively um, challenge uh, the heterosexism that exists, the homophobia that exists, your own um, your own kind of tendencies. Uh, maybe like if you, you say things like no homo, constantly, or you um, make certain jokes about gay people that might be, um, I mean, you know, not to say that you can't ever make jokes, maybe, I mean, you know, it really depends on the joke, but I mean, um, it, it, that's, it, being an ally is more <laughs> than simply just saying, saying that you support the group, you know, people, the group of people that you're an ally of, and this, it, 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 appeal, it, it applies to any kind of ally, and again, um, a, a big thing is, you know, it, you can't, and, and similarly, if you claim to be not just a gay ally, but an LGBTQ plus ally, um, that includes the T, that includes bisexuals, that includes pansexuals, and so, you know, and it includes asexuals, and if you, um, and if you, um, if you, if you say that, um, you support all those people, but you make thing, jokes about bisexuals not really existing, or, um, you know, about asexuals not really existing, or if you, um, you know, if you don't really respect transgender people's 
uh, preferred pronouns and you don't um, respect a, a trans person's uh, gender, um, you're not really being an LGBTQ plus ally. You might be being a gay ally, kind of, um, <laughs> arguably. But um, the, the, the thing is, I think we have to, if you want to be, we have to hold our allies to higher standards. <laughs> you, 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 we can't just let people be going around patting themselves on the back for being allies by just doing the bare minimum of saying they support gay people. Because uh, anybody can really do it. Well, I mean, you know, obviously that's maybe a bigger gesture to openly say you support gay people and openly say you support gay marriage or things like that. That might be a bigger gesture if you live in a place where most people don't believe that. But there's more and more uh, places where you're not exactly in the minority if you are saying that. And it's not a huge risk to um, say that you're pro-gay, you know? It, it, it's not the only risk is that people might maybe think that you're gay, but mm, I, I think a lot of places, that's not even true. Um, so, you know, like, in a, a lot of places, you're more in the minority if you, um, if you say that you're against gay people. Uh, you know, it's becoming more and more like that in a lot of places. Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, even in some places where that are less progressive, a lot of times it's more just like a 50-50. Um, so, I, I, again, I think that we shouldn't settle for um, <laughs> allies who aren't very good allies. <laughs> you can't simply be an ally of black people by um, simply uh, just saying uh, that you you don't like racism <laughs> or that you uh, that you think you know that, or that you see black people exactly the same as white people or whatever or if you see uh, or that you you, you totally um, you have black friends or things like that that's not enough for being an ally you actually have to um, acknowledge your privilege as a white person, if you are white, um, and you all have to actually actively fight the systems of oppression uh, that work against black people, um, and, and, and be conscious of uh, the, the, the um, microaggressions uh, that exist and that you might be tempted to uh, perpetrate, you know, you might be, um, and how uh, you might have uh, own your own kind of like racist thoughts, um, and it's exactly the same uh, with LGBTQ plus. I mean, you know, and if that's hard for too hard for you, then just don't claim to be an ally because <laughs> I, I mean, you know, being an, a good ally, being an effective ally, isn't as simple uh, as some people like to think it is. And another thing, any A's in the acronym, the LGBTQ. Um, P, I, A, etc. Um, a lot of things are in uh, that acronym. <laughs> Probably some stuff I've missed. Um, but any A's in the acronym stand for asexual, agender, or aromantic, things like that. It doesn't stand for ally. <laughs> Maybe some people have, in the past, have said that, um, <laughs> that, that the A in the LGBTQ plus acronyms uh, stands for ally. Uh, it doesn't. Okay, <laughs> being, it, it, it's, it's, I think that's like, I mean, and some people maybe think I'm being harsh, but I, I don't think so. I think I'm being perfectly reasonable. Being an ally doesn't mean that you get to be an honorary queer person, you know? That's, that's just ridiculous. Just like being, uh, if I'm like an honorary, I mean, if I'm, um, an ally of, of say I'm a, an ally of black people, um, I don't get to be an honorary black person, you know? I mean, uh, it, 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 I think that we have to, <laughs> I, 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 I think that that's important. I, I think, because here's the thing, I think sometimes um, a lot of um, queer activism that, that some people do focuses on pleasing straight people and catering to straight people and, and trying to get straight people uh, to support us. Um, I mean, and you know, it is important that we have support from straight people because guess what there's like a lot more straight people than there are queer people or a lot more people who claim to be straight than there are uh, openly queer people anyways but um <laughs> i don't know what i don't know any of the actual what the who knows what the actual statistics statistics are but um the point is um the focus of lgbtq plus activism can't simply be pleasing straight people it it, it 
it, we can't make our activism be end up being about straight people because LGBTQ plus activism is not about straight people. It's about us. It's about queer people. <laughs> so uh, I, I think we have to be critical of any kind of heterocentric um, queer activism. Because here's here's the main point. You know, um, a lot of times I think that people. I mean, sometimes it can be difficult. You know, I mean, sometimes. Um, it's hard because people haven't been taught uh, what, uh, you know, how to be respect. I mean, you know, there's a lot of heterosexist thing to say, like, uh, towards gay people, that some straight people totally don't even understand why they're problematic. Like, for example, if you um, see two people in a gay relationship and you ask them, oh, well, who's the girl in the relationship? Or who's the boy in the relationship? Things like that. Um, some gay people maybe probably would totally not mind if you ask that, but why it's a problem is because in a gay relationship, the whole thing, most of the time in a gay relationship, depending on, uh, queer relationships can vary a little bit, but in general, um, if it's a cisgender gay relationship, if it's two men in a relationship with each other, or two women in a relationship with each other, then um, in, 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 the relationship between two men, both of them are men. Neither one of them is the woman. <laughs> and uh, both of them are the men in that relationship. That's, that's, it's a gay relationship. That's, that's how it works. That's the point, is there's not two genders. And if it's a, a, uh, a lesbian relationship, it, a typical, you know, a, a, if, if it's a lesbian relationship between two women, <laughs> Both of them are the women in the relationship. That's that's how lesbian relationships work. Um, now, some uh, queer relationships are a little bit different. There's um, queer relationships between trans people um, and uh, gender queer people, uh, non-binary people of any kind, um, and just bisexual. Sometimes you can have a relationship um, that is between uh, a man and a woman, but it's not really a heterosexual relationship because um, both of them are, uh, both of them are queer, uh, or one of them's queer. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going on a little bit of a rant. But yeah, the point is, it may seem like it's not a big deal to say something like asking people who's the boy or who's the girl. It, who, whoever's the boy or whoever's the girl in any relationship, it's the people who identify that way. So if it's a relationship between two boys or two girls, then they're both boys, they're both girls, nobody's... The, the, the gender that they aren't, and if it's people identify certain ways, then they're that gender. I mean, ah, <laughs> and, I, and some people think like that's that's not a big deal, um, but things like that are a big deal because it it it, it perpetuates the heterosexist notion that everyone who that that the old that straight relationships are clearly the superior model of any relationship and that all relationships have to follow that model and therefore there can't be a gay relationship where there's not a male role and a female role. Uh, so and that, that's why it's something like that is a, and it's maybe, you know, and there's tons of heterosexist things and cissexist things that people might say and totally not realize it like that kind of thing. But anyways, I mean all these things to a straight person might seem like, why the, do they matter? Um, but I think it's important to remember that while it may feel like to you that you're being made to walk on eggshells constantly, um, it, I think it's important that we don't, that you don't trivialize um, the feelings of uh, queer people and that you understand that there is a reason why um, queer people uh, are picky about some of this stuff because it's it does affect us it does it does affect queer people when people um, from a young age uh, people project certain expectations on them you know assume that if uh, they uh, are assigned uh, male at birth that they're going to be attracted to women and that they're going to uh, want to wear this and want to wear that and do be interested in this kind of stuff um, and it, vice versa for people who are assigned female at birth. Um, things like that really affect, have profound effects on queer people and it, 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 it causes a lot of pain uh, when, for a lot of queer people, um, 
when we have to um, when we discover that because we're going against uh, a lot of times not everybody but a lot of group people end up going against entirely what their parents expectations of them are and what their society's expectations of them are and a lot of the small stuff that seems like it's small um, really does add up and it it, 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 it it does harm queer people and I think it's important and particularly also with the trans stuff it seems like um, it's a nuisance to some of these queer people it, it, to the, the, some of these um, straight people that they have to you know be careful about what they say but it's 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 it, it, it matters and I think if you don't have that experience of being uncomfortable with um, your assigned gender and what people's expectations of you are based on your just your genitals basically really when it comes down to um, you don't understand what it's like to um, grow up um, and feel uncomfortable when people refer to you by a certain pronoun that everyone refers to you by and 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 tells you um, uh, to, to, to cut your hair a certain way tells you to um, present yourself a certain way, uh, tells you that your mannerisms aren't right because of your gender, um, you know, it, it, things like these, it, it's, it's important to understand that people have the attitude that queer people are, are complaining about the little things and that we should lighten up a little bit, um, but I think people need to understand that this stuff isn't little and the reason why you, people think that it's small stuff and that we're being picky um, is because they have a different experience and they don't understand our experience.